Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to do the most interesting of the three cases called the underdamping case. That's the case where B squared is less than 4MK. And the reason why that is special is when we look at the radical here, if B squared is less than 4MK and we're subtracting 4MK from B squared, we get a negative quantity, which makes that an imaginary number. So therefore, we're going to have two imag imaginary roots. And so beta is now going to be I times omega prime. Omega prime is now going to be the imaginary solution here. So in other words, omega prime is now going to be equal to the square root of 4mk, whoop, 4mk, I'm trying to write here, 4mk minus b squared all divided by 2m. And I'm going to now go ahead and simplify that a little bit more. I'm going to put the 2m inside the radical, so this is equal to the square root of 4mk minus b squared divided by, when I put in the, in the radical, it would be 4m squared. And if I now divide that into the numerator, I get equal to the square root of the 4 and the m cancels out. So we have k over m minus b squared over 4m squared. And now that becomes the new frequency of the damped oscillatory motion. Even though it's going to be uh, diminishing over time, for example, what's going to happen here is we're going to displace the mass and it's going to start oscillating back and forth. It's still going to oscillate because the damping factor is small, so it's going to keep overshooting the equilibrium point, but over time, the oscillation size will decline, so it's going to oscillate, oscillate, it's going to decline in amplitude, and eventually stop after time. But that's going to be the new frequency. Notice that the square root of k over m is the old frequency without damping, and that's going to be diminished now by some, some amount, depending upon how big b squared is. The bigger b, the, b, the bigger b is, the damping factor is, the smaller the oscillatory frequency. So what does the general equation now look like uh, when we reduce this into the new form, keeping in mind that now this will be an imaginary number? So what that becomes then, this equation now becomes x as a function of time is equal to some amplitude, let's call it a, times e to the minus, we still have b over 2m, times the time, times, and now the imaginary part is now going to be written as a sum of, a, of the sine and the cosine, and that can then be reduced to the cosine of omega prime t minus the phase angle. So that's what the equation ultimately will look like, because this is a reduction of the sum of the sine and the cosine, because simply reduce it to this format, and that would be an easier way to look at it. So this will now be the new equation describing the oscillatory motion of an underdamped system. And what that looks like when we graph it, starting maybe from maximum amplitude, it's going to look like this, and it's going to diminish over time. And so we have this exponential decay portion of the equation. So this is defined by this portion of the equation. So this here determines the exponential decay, and then this will then determine the oscillatory frequency of the decline. And I didn't do that quite right. Maybe I should have made this a little bit taller, like so. So you can see that this kind of drops off over time, like that. So there's this exponential decay function, and then the oscillatory portion of the function involved like that. And notice that the new frequency is equal to this. So this is the new frequency, and this is the equation that determines the oscillatory motion. And that's what we mean by an underdamped system. And I'm going to show you some examples of actually how to use that in order to define, for example, the frequency of a damped system and how long it takes for, it to, for the damping to cease and what the damping factor would be to have critical damping and so forth. So if you're interested now in how to work out some homework problems, look at the next several videos and I'll show you some examples of how to do that.